I'm amazed how people can just randomly invest without any sort of R&D into an area. Every time there's a launch, I see people jumping into the launch despite of doing some basic research. So again, in this channel, we understand uh, how to analyze investments. Today, we're going to discuss Marjan Island. I'm going to give you an overview of the topics we're going to discuss in today's video. So, of course, we're going to understand the demand and supply, by which I mean uh, how many visitors you're expecting. We're going to break it down per year, per month, per day, and then how many rooms are going to be there in Marjan Island and uh, how we're going to match that. Uh, we'll understand the competition. What sort of competition are we assessing, the local and the international? We'll understand the revenue, what sort of revenue models we are expecting in uh, Marjan Island. We're going to understand a bit on ultra luxury hotels, how it's fully booked and uh, how that's going to impact a, a positive impact on the casino situation in Marjan Island. Uh, Rise of the Middle East, a very special section. Uh, I'd like to give you some uh, info into that. Uh, we will definitely cover the Israel Hamas war. I think that's a question that a lot of investors are concerned about. So we'll give you an insight into that as well, as in how uh, the impact. And then the investor client demographic in the region. Uh, what sort of investor client demographics we're expecting into the region. So let's start. So Jan 1, 2027, very important date because that's when uh, Win Resorts Grand launch and it's, it's on time, it's on schedule. Uh, the RAC authorities are I think, completely focused on the Win's launch. So we're expecting around 3.8 million visitors that year in 2027. And we're expecting it to climb towards 5.5 million visitors mark by 2030. So that means when you break it down, we're looking at around 10,500 visitors a day. Now, what's the problem with that? The problem is that in in Win in Marjan Island, in total, when I was analyzing the supply, 15,000 rooms, where we're looking at around 10,000 plus minus visitors a day. So clearly, there's going to be a challenge of occupancy. So we need to choose the best. So we need to understand who are the operators, what are the hotels that are coming in the area, which falls under another, let's say, a con of Marjan Island that I've observed is that you need to understand who the master developer is, like what is the plan with the whole of Marjan Island. There's just going to be a lot of hotels. But I understand the casino is a huge impact. Win itself has around 1,200 rooms. It's going to be the biggest resort, the biggest hotel in the region one of the biggest um, but then from my understanding uh, speaking of investors from different countries who are into the casino business they've explained that see the casino itself can get quite noisy so there's a possibility that people would like to choose a very premium hotel very close to the casino so they, they can go back relax have a good time and then of course come back to the casino so that is why we need to analyze who are the top contenders in the region so we make the right investment decision. Next, uh, we're coming to sort of revenue. So revenue, um, we are expecting. So this is this is from Bloomberg. So I'll send you a screenshot of what I've studied. I've I've sort of subscribed to all these all these information who are into R and D. So I've, I've subscribed to a, a couple of providers. So all these information is from legit sources. So we're expecting a revenue of $6.6 .6 billion just from the casinos in the Middle East region, which would potentially beat both Singapore and Macau. That That is quite big information for the Middle East. Um, yes, definitely the casino industry is big. Um, now another, so I'm coming to my fourth point, competition. If, if Yas, if Abu Dhabi as well opens up casinos, what does that mean for you as an investor in Marjan Island? Which one you should be choosing? Who are the competitors coming up over there? I'll, I'll touch base on that point as well when I come into the best casinos in the world. So we understood the demand supply. We understood, okay, there are about 10,000 plus visitors a day. There are 15,000 rooms. This revenue is about $6.6 .6 billion, which is a very positive sign, which really improves the GDP of both Ras al Khaimah and the Middle East, which is since Dubai is affiliated with Ras al Khaimah, it's a 45 minute drive. So um, it's going to really help the whole of the Middle East region. Um, another 
good point to assess is that all the ultra luxury hotels in Dubai are fully occupied where we're trying to book the Royal Atlantis for an investor it's sold out the Royal Atlantis is sold out and that that's not cheap that doesn't come cheap again a very positive indicator of the kind of demographic that's coming to Dubai that means the ultra rich from across the world are choosing Dubai as a destination to live now if we, if we consider the inflation and the economic situation in let's say US UK Europe Singapore Hong Kong China Australia all of them are beginning to identify and recognize the Middle East and in the Middle East definitely Dubai as a place which is safe a great place to stay great infrastructure extremely safe tax-free so many many benefits as to why people are choosing this region to live in now uh, I, was, I was I was getting to a point called rise of the Middle East so Alan Howard the uh, co-founder of Brevin Howard asset management firm now this is the world's largest hedge fund so they have he has advice that um, this hedge fund has assets worth more than 35 billion dollars so they have mentioned that Abu Dhabi has a high probability of being the new global financial center most uh, major hedge funds from across the world are choosing the Middle East as a destination um, and 400 out of 500 fortune 500 companies are stationed in the Middle East again these are very very positive indicators of Dubai uh, I'll make a more detailed video on the future of Dubai as to why you don't have to be worried at all how apart from the casino another very very big factor that's going to really change Dubai's market on a whole is actually crypto so we'll have a very detailed discussion on that as well of how the casino crypto and the way the government is shaping the country is going to change this destination it's going to be one of the top destinations best cities in the world to live in so I'll quickly touch base the Israel Hamas war so when the Israel Hamas war uh, was initiating with Yemen being involved a lot of American US investors got very very uncomfortable and were asking us as in um, will there be an impact on the Middle East now as you can see then also I advised them that it's not going to create an impact see because of the government's stand with all the countries Dubai is always known to be safe so it had has had zero impact on the market I just want to touch base quickly on that don't want to get more into the political discussions but uh, it had it literally had zero impact to understand the investor demographic that's coming to Dubai that's going to invest and the top contenders for this product we need to understand the top casinos in the world so we're looking at uh, the Venetian Macau the Monte Carlo in Monaco the Kurhaus Baden Baden in Germany Marina Bay Sands, Singapore, Bellagio, Las Vegas, Maxim's Casino in London, The Star in Sydney, and Sun City in South Africa. So these, so these currently are some of the best casinos in the world. So now if you understand the location of Dubai and these casinos, very soon the let's say the high rollers or the top investors of these casinos will definitely consider Dubai as a better place to come stay have a great time and then uh, spend some money you know which is again like I said great for the GDP of Dubai uh, very very positive indicator for Dubai uh, now we'll understand the competition locally as well okay to just to understand the difference between let's say Marjan Island versus Yas Island now the win um, Steve Wynn designed the Bellagio now the Bellagio is considered as the best casino in the world like the movie Ocean's Eleven was shot in the Bellagio so uh, if 
if he is if the win is being designed in Marjan Island it's definitely going to be one of the best casinos in the world apart from which of course the MGM and the Bellagio are in talks in discussions with entering the Middle East as well they will definitely competition is good investors were concerned when there was only the wind resort in Dubai but now the fact that um, Bellagio MGM has possibilities not in Dubai but most probably in Abu Dhabi uh, Dubai is going to be more like a poker destination which is fair enough uh, Dubai because see retaining culture is probably one of the biggest reasons why the Middle East is so strong because most of the countries that have demised or, or collapsed is because they weren't able to retain culture so I think this is I, I look at retaining culture as a very strong asset more so it's not a negative it's the biggest positive some of the biggest countries in the world I don't want to mention names have collapsed because of the inability to retain culture so I'm very proud of the fact that Dubai is still st standing strong and saying okay you know let's just keep it as poker destination Marjan Island Yas Island let them be there casino destinations because they are so Marjan Island is not in Ras al Khaimah it's an island just before Ras al Khaimah similarly how Yas Island is not exactly in Abu Dhabi city it's just uh, it's just 45 minute drive from Dubai either one of them so even if let's say the MGM or the Bellagio comes to Yas Island and has been in Marjan you're still okay it's it's not bad but our major concern is that okay there are t around 10,000 plus visitors a day there are 15,000 rooms so what we need to understand who are the top contenders coming in Marjan Island. So I've made a map. So of the map, all the hotels that are coming into Marjan Island, um, I believe the best or the safest investment. Of course, my, my number one is address, Ema, no doubt. See, when you see a brand name, again, I don't want to get into specific details, but please do a little bit of R&D on who the actual developers because you can get a brand name for just two percent but who is the who's going to actually develop the project because the whole game is the con contractor right like on what quality he produces so that's really really important for you to assess because i know a lot of big names but not very big developers so uh address is definitely one of the best on my list there's no boo JW Marriott will be fav uh, a favorite amongst the Americans and you have Nikki Beach. So I think these are my top contenders. We'll be doing a comparative analysis on this for probably our next video. This video is more of a quantitative analysis on different data and how we analyze an investment. So uh, watch out for two very interesting videos. One is the future of Dubai as to some very, very strong indicators on how the market's going to a few how few factors are really going to change the market and a comparative analysis of the top contenders in Russell Kaimla. Thank you for watching. Moments ahead. Experience. Experience.